Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today we're going to be going through ways you can check if your computer has been hacked, what to look for, what kinds of things might happen. Now first of all, let's be clear, there are multiple types of malware. What we're going to be focusing on today are remote access trojans, rats, and also info stealers, which are essentially a lightweight version of a rat that only works in one direction, where they can take your data but they don't actually get persistent control. And within that subgenre of info stealers, there are two types. There are info stealers that run once and delete themselves. These ones are actually, in my opinion, the more dangerous version because you may never realize what's happened. There are also info stealers that will run once, put themselves in your startup folder, and run every single time you log into your computer. In theory, they collect more information, but they're also a lot easier to detect. Now, what should you do if you find any of these? Well, I'll talk more about that at the end of the video, but the simple answer is you should change absolutely every password and cancel any credit card on the computer. So what are some red flags? Well, one of the ones I've recently noticed, and we actually had someone in my Discord who had this exact symptom, and he described it as I'm not able to use administrator functions. Now, what did he mean? Well, uh, for example, this is grayed out, and you get a warning that your system administrator has disabled these functions. Now, the only time you should ever see that is at work or school, if, you're, if you actually are in a managed IT environment. If you see that on your home computer and you didn't set it up, boom. That's a problem. You are in trouble. So, another red flag that we'll get to, let me just show you is we'll go to Windows Security. I actually have, I might have to undisable Defender in order to, and now that we've re-enabled it, what you're gonna wanna look for is if you go over to here, first of all, you can check allowed threats and make sure nothing that you did not mean to allow has been allowed. And then you can go on over to manage settings. And of course, this, this is done on purpose by me, but if you see either of these disabled, and you didn't do it on purpose, that's a massive red flag. Tamper protection being off is another red flag, but some people might do that. Uh, now here's where almost every malware without fail, and later in the video we're going to test some so I can show you these giveaways. You will find a horde of exclusions. Now how do they do that? Well, if you give them administrator, they can just use PowerShell to add a trove of exclusions. So what you may see is either the entire C drive being excluded, a specific folder, usually something hidden in app data or program data in here that shouldn't be in here, or uh, you may also see asterisk.exe, which would simply disable Defender on all executable files. Any of these functionally disable Windows Defender. The reason they'll do this is because while their malware is undetected at the time of installation, once their specific variant of it has been investigated, uh, that'll change. Now, for the next portion of this video, we're going to use a free and open source tool called SysInternals. Now, SysInternals is something that does, it gets into the internals, and you, you do have to be a bit careful with it, but as long as you are just looking and not changing settings, you should be fine. Now, there are a few of these tools that are really useful, but I'm just going to download the whole suite because it's small and free, so that's straightforward. So here we go. Of course, I've already got it extracted, so we can just go through this. Now, the tools that are the most useful, uh, this one is absolutely key. It lets you see what runs when the computer starts up. If you're infected, there is virtually no way for this not to be catching something. The other tools that you may want to look at are Process Explorer, and of course if you're an analyst you may also want to look at Process Monitor, but that's only going to help you once you know what the problem is. Now I always like to elevate this so that we can see a bit more information. We can go through, and of course everything here, as I haven't installed anything bad yet, it is all legit. You can see our user mode applications and our system services. Now one trick some applications will use is either running themselves as a service, which will still show the name of the exe, or 
creating a fake service host or services.exe. The way you can tell is by the process tree. Servicehost.exe should always be running under services.exe, this uh, which is always running under WinInit. A scheduled task that runs a fake one will not run under here, so that can be another way of telling. Another red flag would be nested service hosts. If it was running as a service, I've never seen that happen under normal Windows. You also you can look at these processes and get an idea of what's normal, but given Windows does get updates, so you can't know for sure. So that's this one. Now let's also go and look at auto run. Now just like the other one, you can get more information by elevating, meaning running as administrator. Now there is one annoying bug with this program I just have to point out, and that is that a few legitimate Microsoft things do show up as not verified. Those are these drivers, and intermittently, although it seems to have fixed itself since I ran updates, I also saw Defender not showing up as verified, which would not be good. But otherwise we can get a good idea. Now note how everything we have installed here is verified to be a trusted publisher. Now in a second, uh, we're going to run a malware sample to show how that can change. Now this is a special uh, PySylon Pact, and of course Smart Screen doesn't like it, and Defender actually does warn us that this is a threat. Now for whatever reason it seems to currently like to call rats Wackatat, which doesn't make a ton of sense, but this is in fact a PySylon that is packed using a, a different, it uses Nootka instead of PyInstall. And don't worry, this is a local network setup. I'm not hosting these samples on the public internet, so don't try going to that website because you won't get anything. And this is usually what it looks like when you've run a rat. And uh, note how nothing happens. Sometimes you get a fake error message, but basically nothing has happened. And if we go over to Process Explorer, we might find some indications of the file. Now this PySylon's command and control server is actually dead, so it's not going to do anything harmful. And given uh, the other sample was a bit of a disappointment, we'll just run another one. Another thing to watch out for, by the way, oh, wow, we're getting a lot of hits on this one. Now at least it is detected, which is good, is if you click the malware and it runs and then Defender goes off, you are not safe. Now we can go on over to Process Explorer and see if anything from this file ran. And pretty much immediately uh, we see a new CMD and then the process has actually spawned. Of course, once again, this will depend on whether the command and control server uh, for this is still live. Oh, it's sent a hit. And then we get a defender detection. But this is too late, because what was detected was another stage. Now if we allow these, just to see what happens, which, oh, we get another hit for a different, because oftentimes rats will drop more stuff. We can see that the don't comment process just keeps going back and forth, so you can just try, and sometimes you can successfully just kill the process, sometimes it's going to take a bit more. But that's one very simple example. Now let's try uh, some stealthier and more potent options. So here we have a fresh Luma, and these guys have got an interesting technique where the password is actually nested, so when you extract the second archive, you get, uh, and this is, we've seen this uh, Luma before, but I believe they've upgraded the actual stealer. And now we can go on over to procx and see, okay, how does this, so we call this more.com, and then that calls a con host, which we can't see. That's another red flag, is either you'll see a command window that blinks for a few seconds, or you'll see a command window uh, that is invisible, and nothing, nothing appears to happen when you run a program. Now we've uh, established command and control with a very simple auto it script. And then the second stage is getting hit by Defender, but we have already had all of our information stolen, so don't be fooled into thinking that Defender protected you, because it didn't. Uh, the information has already gone to the command and control server, and now let's check if there's any persistent. And now the second, or the third stage has launched, 
uh, which is a fake notes application, tree notes. No order runs hits yet. And look what's just installed itself. Uh, once the program finished executing, we discovered these Logi Options Plus, which is not a program we've ever heard of, and this is running out of task scheduler, which is one of the most common ways. And note, if it's not verified, ignore whatever comes after it because it doesn't matter, it's a lie. It, it can say anything. It, it can and will copy headers from legitimate system files, but unless it says verified, it is not trustworthy. Now note the 7-zip ones are also unverified, but they are well known. These are fakes. So that's bad. Now I have one more treat for you before we go over some ways of trying to fix the mess. I'm sure you remember the Minecraft rat video from a few days ago. This is completely legitimate software that we just ran. It keeps respawning itself. Now given that we know we've now got uh, several problems installed, let's just try rebooting and see how well this system is working. And then we can make a determination as to what to do. Now freshly after login, uh, let's see, do we have anything that looks like it? Oh, oh yeah, that, that shouldn't be there. At least this one hasn't done the task manager disabled that a few other variants have, but we, we can tell this is infected. So what can we do now? Now, what is one more tell just before we get into solutions? Well, one big red flag is if you see anything that looks like this. Now, this is a recreation by me because none of the samples that I ran did this, but it's quite common. I, I would say about at least one in five uh, of these types of malware will do it. And what that is, is they will, to make your life more difficult, they will actually put 0.0.0, .0 on various anti-malware websites. What that will do in your hosts is, if you go to virustotal.com and you have that in your hosts, it's not going to load. Everyone I've seen has done it to virustotal. You could try malware bytes as well, just to see. But if those websites are suddenly not loading for you, it's probably not because they're down, it's probably because you've got a very bad infection. So knowing that, let's see what we can do to try and alleviate the problem. In my experience, the best free antivirus is Bitdefender. Now I will point out that it has a slightly higher rate of false positives. I'm going to make a special, a dedicated video looking at Bitdefender, but for now, we're going to use that as a potential scan and cleanup tool. The reason I didn't recommend antivirus scanning, by the way, at the beginning of the video was because I've had such a poor, such poor results dealing with especially info stealers and rats using antivirus software that I, I don't want to give people a false sense of security. Now, once this is installed, or if we're using a different method immediately, what we want to do is turn off the internet. The reason is because if you have a rat, the attacker could be looking at your computer and could be planning something. Much better not to let them interfere. Now that we've installed Bitdefender, we can actually run a scan. I'm also going to turn off the network connection, so anything running in the background won't be killing the antivirus. Oh, we just got our first hit on the threats. That's good. And once real-time protection is engaged, in addition, if any of these try to execute, we can try uh, our Luma sample again. Uh, it's just not going to work. Let's see which one got hit here. Of course, we'd have to sign in, but it will still run, uh, at least for the first day without sign-in, which is good. Now, let's see what it found as a threat. .comet.exe. Okay. So it only caught the most obvious. So even, even a good antivirus, while it will, in real-time, hopefully help detect these activities, it's not a great cleanup. So what do we recommend? Well, for 99% of you, and especially if you're watching this because you want to know what to do, what I'm going to recommend is a complete reinstall of Windows. There, there is no other solution that doesn't require a lot of knowledge that actually works. Antivirus scans are quite ineffective, as we saw, even with good products. I, I wouldn't trust a, a formerly infected system scanned with Windows Defender further than I could see it. And even if you use a bunch of scanners, the problem is you, you might as well, you're generally with info stealers better off waiting for the C2 server to just die than you are for an antivirus detection, because generally speaking, this, the command and control server will have shut down before the antivirus figures out what it is. So that's not a solution. So what you can do, and 
Ideally, if you have a second computer or have someone who does and a flash drive, best thing to do is go to Microsoft's website, use the Microsoft Media Creation Tool on a separate computer, and then boot into the BIOS. If you're unable to do that, and this is definitely a subpar option, you can reset. And that's what this will do. Now make sure if you're going this route, unplug the Ethernet cable or turn off Wi-Fi, because if you're ratted, they can try and intercept. But if you're able to do that, this should solve your problem. The reason I say should is because it is theoretically possible to embed malware into that image, but I've never seen malware that actually does that. And once it's rebooted, it's out of the old installed and it's into the Windows installer. So then the final thing to address is, okay, we fixed the computer, but what about everything that was stolen? And that is the worst thing about being ratted or having your info stolen is, is there is no putting the genie back in the bottle. First of all, I explain what you certainly should not do. What you should not do is pay ransom or pay someone not to release your information or use your information. That is a complete waste of time and money. So what should you do? Well, in order of priority, if you have any cryptocurrency wallets, first thing you do, get money out of there and somewhere that is not, was not on the computer that was hacked. That's priority number one if it applies to you because that can be stolen irretrievably it's probably already happened if you ran a stealer, but if you're lucky and you caught it quickly, maybe you can save that. Next step, online accounts. The most important online account that can be used to get into any of your others is your email accounts. If your email account is compromised, any online account you have should be reasonably expected to be compromised. So, if you have Gmail, change the password, regardless of if you have two-factor authentication, then what you want to do is go to your sessions, and on Google this is easy, and sign out every device. The combination of that will get the attacker out of your Google account. If you have another email provider, the steps for that may vary a bit. Another thing you should do is check your email client for filters. Depending on how your email client works, this may be a different setup. On Gmail, it's pretty easy to find. What you want to look for is emails from certain sites being either blocked or forwarded somewhere. This is another trick to hide the activity. If you see any filters you don't remember creating or don't want, delete them. Once that's done, now you should go to your online accounts, go through every single one that uh, you were either logged into or had ever saved credentials for on that computer, and change the password. I strongly recommend using a password manager to do this rather than doing it manually so that you can have randomly generated secure password. With that said, if you had a password manager on the computer that was just hacked, you need to change every single password in it and change the master. Benefit of having a password manager is this has now become much easier and many of them can automatically change many websites for you. Once that is done, the final thing you should probably do if you had credit cards saved in Chrome or anywhere else that they might have been intercepted is call your bank and have them cancel any credit or debit cards that were on that computer and get new ones. The benefit of that is if they were to try and repurpose your credit cards, it wouldn't work. I would also suggest being very diligent for suspicious transactions. And if you made the fateful decision of storing identity documents not encrypted on your computer, you may also want to look into anti-identity theft services. I don't know much about that industry, so I don't have recommendations to make, but I would recommend doing it. So that is going to be all for this video. I hope it was helpful. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe, and tell me in the comments below if you have any other tips for dealing with this. I am going to make a few more videos on this subject, because I think it's something that a lot of people are interested in. Bye!